There's first of all an ongoing FTC case uh, against Qualcomm, and if they were to rule Qualcomm a monopoly, uh, that would really just turn their entire business on its head. Uh, at more than half of Qualcomm's total, total business right now is around the royalty they get on every 3G, 4G handset, basically, uh, and this would negate that, or at least lessen it dramatically. Chris, are there realistically any alternatives for Apple, though? Well, uh, so there is a distinction here between royalties that they're getting for the IP that they're using, uh, and that is what Apple's debating in court today, and then there's the chips that they actually use. So today, Apple uses Intel 4G modems. The problem is what happens at 5G, and to your point, it's not clear that there's an alternative uh, that they can use outside of Qualcomm. Qualcomm has the best uh, in class technology that you're going to find out there in 5G right now. So does that mean, Ed, that beyond Wall Street, I mean, this, this case and the way it's settled could actually have implications for consumers if it's going to affect 5G connectivity? No, not a chance. Uh, the, the 5G, well, the 5G thing is a red herring at this point. I mean, the street's all been a buzz since, uh, since uh, summer of last year that Intel is not going to make it. They're not going to be able to deliver the 5G modem. And it, Apple's going to have to settle with Qualcomm to get the 5G modem. It's a bunch of hooey. Um, Tim Cook's already come out, or Apple's come out through Reuters in November, said, no, we're not settling with Qualcomm. Intel said they're on time. Our checks say they're on time. There's tons of alternatives to, to Qualcomm, primarily because the 5G story is way ahead of its skis. Uh, the 4G systems that we're using now are already much faster than anything you can use on your phone. And if you go through every one of the carriers, T-Mobile's, Verizon's, AT&T's story on 5G, they're tissue thin. So it's mostly a marketing game this year. You can use almost anything in a phone, and nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. So Tim Cook does not need Qualcomm, and they've already replaced Qualcomm. Uh, the last two phones, actually the last three phones, they started with Intel, and now they've completely replaced them. So, I mean, uh, it's the confusion on the street about this, if there still is any confusion about Qualcomm's fate, will be wrapped up by the summer when uh, Apple announces, or Intel announces, they've got their first 5G chip out, and then we'll be done with this part of the story. Chris, uh, do you agree with that? I mean, uh, I note that one of your top picks uh, is based on 5G, but, but base station opportunities as opposed to, to the, the, the chips themselves. Yeah, I mean, 5G for the industry overall, whether you're talking about handsets and the increased complexity that will come with 5G in handsets, which I do continue to think that, that Apple and even Intel are struggling with now, uh, or baseband, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, broad-based infrastructure when it comes to 5G. Uh, baseband, for example, uh, there's a company called Marvell uh, that's working very hard on a chip for 5G base stations that will be ramping at the end of this year, and that, uh, that is one of our top picks uh, based on that opportunity.